Hey, I'm Trey Lopashinsky, and I'm joined by Councillor Trevor Bolin for the second episode of the Council Corner, where twice a month I will be meeting with a member of Council to chat about ongoing topics discussed in the community, as well as items from the recent Council meetings. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, uh, Councillor Bolin, for, for joining me today. Thanks for having me on number two. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're going to get used to it here over the next couple of weeks talking about budget. Was first draft was proposed on Monday. A lot of the questions for today are coming from that. Um, basically, just to you know, it's it's a thick document. All of them are. Um, even for me, who's covered many different budget meetings, still every year I have to kind of reintroduce myself to it. Um, I guess basically for residents, what are some important points that they should be looking at in the budget? It's a good question, Trey, and, and I think. Right at basics is to understand there's two budgets. There is a capital budget and there's an operation budget. So capital budgets are fun. Capital budgets are uh, new streets being paved, new buildings being built. Uh, you know, a lot of the different things you can feel, touch and see. Operations are a lot different. They are your city transit. It is your RCMP. It is your city staff. Um, so, so very different budgets. One, of course, is fun. What is not? So I, mm -hmm. I think that Going back to basics and understanding the two of them, and, and, and as you and I go through this today, we'll, we'll touch on, on two of them and, and what affects what. But you know what? Honestly, other than that, I think that's the biggest thing. This year is a little bit different. Over the years, we, we've heard from residents who've said, hey, you know what? It's fantastic you keep adding these, these buildings like the Festival Plaza and, and redoing the parks and stuff. But you know, when are we going to stop having to pay for that kind of stuff, right? It feels like we paid for that 30 years ago. Why are we paying for it again? So council this year actually decided to take some of the funds that that are being caused by new facilities um, out of operations and, and move that from our, our piece of agreement money our, our originally called fair share. So, mm. you know, the, it levels the playing field a little bit. And, and, and I think when you do that, and, and that is one of the things we heard from residents is, is to look at these different changes. And, and, you know, this is the first year. So I'm excited to see the changes that that alone is going to make in this budget. Well, first of all, just talking about the operating budget, um, also, David Joy, the CFO for the city, uh, he said in his presentation that he presented a budget that was fully balanced because, you know, I mean, last year, just for residents who may not know, sometimes you will come with a deficient. The goal of the city is to then work together to balance that completely. He has already presented it with a balanced budget. So just to start off, how much work do you think you guys have to go in um, now with what was presented on Monday since he kind of really did everything? and uh, he really delves into, so for anyone who wants to know more about the budget, I mean, uh, David did really go into uh, making it so that he had all the information and tried to explain it as much as possible in his presentation. Um, but yeah, so I guess what's the process moving forward? Because it seems like it always depends, depending on the year, how much work you guys have to put in. Coming off of this first draft, how much work do you think you have to put in left? Council's fortunate. Council has a, has a, a team, uh, David and his team, and, and Shirley and Angie and everybody that supports that team that have been here for a, a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. Shirley's probably the second or, or, or third longest employee at the Stu Fortune, John. And, and we've got, you know, we've got a team of, of certified um, financial bodies that, that work on this throughout the year. So David, David did a fantastic job. I, you know, I think part of it, though, is, is transparency. It's, it's communication. It's the fact that Throughout the year, uh, you know, the, the finance team knows what um, council's direction is. They know we don't like surprises. They know that, you know, we're the, we're the best form of government for people to have a say because you're going to run into us at the grocery store. You're going to run into us at the restaurant. And, you know, council needs to always remain transparent and open throughout the year when it comes to these different projects. So, you know, I think having a team that, that works well together. I mean, Fort St. John over the years has been, um, recognized um, by different financial institutions, by the province, um, you know, on, on the fantastic and amazing job that they do on, on balancing the budget. And, and, you know, we have clean audits. There's not a lot of municipalities that can say that. So, you know, the, the, the topic always becomes, are my taxes going up, right? Oh, how much are my taxes going mm -hmm. up? What did my assessment go up, which is out of our control for the assessments. But um, when sometimes I think the conversation needs to be Wow. Right. Like that, mm. that does, those are hard lines that's open. It's transparent. There's no surprises. Um, and, and it shows the amount of work that's went into that. Yeah, for sure. And you, uh, you did bring it up, um, with the, the tax increase. So that was one of the things that was presented, um, in order to balance the budget. Another thing was, uh, transferring 10% of the PRA, which is the Peace River Agreement, which, uh, Councillor Bolin had talked about 
in order to um, cover the costs of, of wages and things like that, which we'll get into in a second. But I did want to talk about, about tax revenue. So overall, which is including residential, commercial, um, I believe David Joyce said it was over a 4% raise overall. Yeah. Um, and then for the actual property tax, so property owners will pay an additional $72 uh, for the year. So $6 per month on an average property value of uh, over $341,000. So, I mean, like you said, that's the first thing people want to know. Do you think that's a fair increase? And uh, why was it needed? You know, it's funny. So, so we, we, I mean, and we have a ton of conversations about this and, and, you know, even, even like I said, throughout the year, they're not, they're not budget meetings, but they're conversations of, of how is this going to affect this come January, right? Uh, and, and in all fairness, the budget actually starts back in October as, as staff start to put together, you know, projects that, that public have requested. Um, you know, one that I, I mentioned a year, year and a half ago, we read at 84th Street. Well, that was, that was solely from somebody who came to the city that said, this, this street needs sidewalks. This street needs street lights. These mm. kids are not safe going to school. So, you know, we, we look at that and we go, how can we fit that into the budget? And that, that went back to October and then November, December. So, you know, th there is going to be an increase of $6 a month um, on the average home this year. And, and you know, it, 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 there's municipalities that are going to be a lot more than that. Fort mm. St. John is fortunate that, that we've been able to split our budgets like we have been. Um, we, I've been on council for, this would be probably, I don't know if this would be my 16th budget, uh, maybe my 17th budget. I don't remember. Um, but you know what we have, we have, we have not ever increased taxes to what we see other municipalities increasing them to. Um, fortunately, John has always held a very, very strong line. We've been fortunate with, with the Peace River Agreement funds, um, that that funds our capital. So, you know, when, when you're looking at a $6, uh, a, a month tax increase and you're realizing that that's you know, two coffees, two, two large double doubles or, or however a person does it. Mm -hmm. um, when you really break that down, that's not a lot of money. When you're considering the amount of staff, uh, you know, around that 300 staff in the city of Fortune, that's your streets being cleared, that's your RCMP, that's your bus. Um, you know, and you start to look at all of this. This is your team making sure that your water is, is one of the best water systems in, in, the, in the country. Uh, making sure that when you flush your toilet, that sewer is gone. Um, so all of that is, is, you know, those operations are what people need to understand that that's what they're paying their taxes for. And, and, you know, not to mention our, we have a world-class fire department, right? Mm -hmm. So your house insurance is actually cheaper here than in neighboring communities because of how fantastic our fire department is and, and where they rank. So, you know, what? It, it, it's six bucks. So six bucks for all of that, I'll pay it. Mm -hmm. uh, on the business side, you know, businesses, the average business is going to see about a $700 increase a year. Um, again, not an exponential. I can tell you in my businesses, my utilities went up higher than that in this previous year. So that doesn't surprise me. Right. Yeah. So when you look at, you know, and you look at that, so, yeah, and here's what people need to figure out. So our operational budget, again, at, at its base route, um, is, is what well, it takes us to heat facilities. It is, it is the heat that goes into the, to the skating rink. So you can sit and watch your kids. It is, uh, or the air conditioning, uh, it, you know, it is ensuring that we've got ice in all of our buildings. It is ensuring that we as residents can, can continue to live our lives the way we live. Those are the operations. That's the $6, right? And it, you know what, honestly, again, nobody likes an increase. I don't think it matters if it's 50 cents or if it's six bucks because you just feel like everybody's hitting you from somewhere, right? Go to the grocery store, right? You, you go to the grocery store, well, you know what? We're paying those same kind of carbon taxes as residents, mm -hmm. um, both on our, on our city buildings, insurances. Um, it, it just doesn't stop. Council's prerogative, council's goal this year was how do we make sure that we keep those as small and minimal as we can so that residents can continue to live and love their lives in Fort St. Well, and si the city has to worry about inflation and all these costs Massive. increasing too Massive. as well, right? Yeah. So Way more than what you would in your household. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. So it's, you know, a lot of factors that you guys have to, to keep in mind. And um, since I've been here, I, I'm going on near four now and um, I've covered the council every single year since. And large reports, but, you know, David does a good job of, of breaking it down and, and the comparisons and uh, just a lot of numbers. Like, I, I'm also maybe a little biased because I just find it so interesting. But, for instance, uh, the tax revenue increase for the city is gen generally 59% uh, lower than similar size municipalities, which I think that is a huge, huge. figure. It's a huge figure. And in the reports, uh, I didn't see it for this one, but I know he's done it before, so maybe I just missed it, is he'll actually have the compared municipalities and what they're paying, which you can, you can go and look And you'll see well. that. So he's, he's busy, he's busy remaking that list mm -hmm. over the years. We council would see that list and, and it's a list that, that gets given out by the province. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, hey, you know what? 
we need to investigate further our, our neighboring communities that may not be in the province. You can't compare us to, to lower mainland. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe in the last couple of weeks you could because they're <laughs> clearing more snow than we are. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's let's compare ourselves because people go, you know, compare it to, to Dawson and Grand Prairie and, and Red Deer and Okotoks. And, you know, so so really, I think that new updated list you're going to see is uh, people are going to enjoy that even more. So let's move over. We mentioned it before the the PRA. Yeah. So um, another reason why, or another way that the city is uh, had balanced the budget in the first draft is taking ten percent of the PRA, which is roughly two point six nine million dollars, um, in order to cover salary increases. Now, on paper, I say that you see that a resident me might be like, well, wh why can't we? Why can't we cut these salaries? And you know, everyone's struggling. Why can't we do that? So from my understanding, these are contractual obligations with the BCGEU and they they cannot be adjusted. No, no, they are. It is under, it is under contract. I mean, mm -hmm. we are, we have an agreement with the uh, BCGEU um, that, that we've just recently, I mean, I think they're every three years we start negotiating and working on them. And, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we've, we've been in, we've been in a position in this city before where we said, you know what, let's not hire a new staff. Let's, let's cut some of these different, um, you know, services that we provide the community came back and said you no, you're doing this wrong mm -hmm. right and, and when we tried to make snow clearing faster uh and, and more efficient but but neighborhoods needed to pitch in and, and clear out windrows in their driveways and and all, you know these different things the residents didn't want that mm -hmm. so you know if, if you imagine for a second we said okay you know we need to cut some of that funding for those for those employees and we cut them um and and what are we going to lose so we're going to lose are we going to lose ice? Are we going to lose trails? Are we going to lose mm -hmm. parks? Are we going to lose the things that, that people at the dog park, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The dog park, you know, everybody at the time was, a, it was a million dollars, right? Why would somebody spend so much money on a dog park? Those that use it rave about it. Those mm -hmm. in other communities that have visited us post on their own community pages about it. Um, but imagine what it takes to then maintain and clean and pick up, you know, dog poop that, that people may have left, mm -hmm. um, on, on a nonstop, um, kind of operation. But you know, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're getting to be a large enough city where, where residents demand more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we need to worry about attracting doctors and professionals. And I mean, we need to worry about attracting everybody because, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting back into the days of, of these under 3% unemployment rates. We're getting back into the days of these, you know, it's going to be under 3% vacancy rate. Um, let's ensure that people are coming to a community that, that they can enjoy and, and that they want to stay in. And, you know, we've got new schools. Uh, we've got new buildings. We've got new programs. Let's not look at what we need to cut to save 1% at this point in time. Let's look how we can make things shift to, to, to ensure that we can have our cake and eat it too. So a lot of stuff coming from the budget. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't cover it all in our, you know, 15 to 20 minute video here. It's but two days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could just probably <laughs> sit here to chat about it for that long for sure. Um, so just... To add on to the PRA, so 77% of it, so the brunt of the PRA money that the city is receiving this year is going towards the capital budget, which is uh, $46.6 million. Huge. Um, Huge capital budget. Yeah, which is a very, very large. Uh, I did want to bring up at least one of the projects, and um, that would have to be 100th Street. It's the last year. Thankfully. <laughs> it's Thanks. the last year of construction. <laughs> And uh, um, again, I've been here four years, so pretty much the whole construction yeah. in the summer. Um, I've heard the the response as as I'm sure you have tenfold. Oh, well, I know you have. Um, you know, we've done stories on it there at Energetic City. Uh, moving into the last year, are residents starting to understand the importance do you, uh, of of what you guys are doing with 100th Street or what is being done to 100th Street? And um, is the city, well, I mean, you obviously are still on board, but is, you know, kind of just what are the thoughts yeah. now with all the street? So, I mean, right from the beginning, yeah. I mean, people people don't like change. I don't like change. Yeah. I voted against, oh, I, I voted against the Hunter Street when it was first presented to us. Um, because, you know, it, it, and it wasn't understanding at that point in time what needed to be done. You know, the services, the services needed to be done. So mm -hmm. why did we care if a Hunter Street was to redo the water and sewer? It was collapsing. The pipes were bad. The, main, the joints were yeah. bad. Um, we got to the point just the year before we started it, we started to see um, open pits forming on 100th Street. So, well, was it that? some? Sorry, so, so on a, some of those pipes weren't they? Some of them the asbestos pipes. They like were, the yeah, pipes, yeah, which the joints, was, yeah, the yeah, joints yeah, the, the, pipe, yeah. the, the wrapping in them had asbestos in them. So, I mean, we had to get rid of them. So, mm -hmm. it, it became how did we put it back together again? So, part of that, and, and I mean, people, you know, we we seen it on Facebook where you know we didn't have a, a chance to have our say in this, and it's like you know we had a ton of public meetings mm -hmm. on this for years. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and the, the point behind 100th Street, and, and we're going to see it now that it finalizes, is a destination. 100th Street isn't to roar home to work. It isn't to roar downtown to the, you know, to the, the grocery store. There's, there's so many streets between 96, 98, 102nd, 104th, 106th, 108th. We have our north-south corridors everywhere. So, you know, if you live in the northwest, for you to come out and go down 100th Street to go to the Totem Mall doesn't make any sense because that's not the destination you should be using, right? You can go down 106th Street all the way down, pop over on 93rd, boom, you're there. Mm-hmm. You got no lights, you got no issues, you know, it's the, there's, no, there's no nothing stopping you. So Port St. John was redesigned as a, as a destination, as a downtown core. So when you're coming to the downtown, whether it's walking, whether it's in the vehicle, whatever it is, you know it's safe. You know that you're not going to get run over because it's, it's four lanes going nonstop as people are driving 70 to 80. We were clocking people as, as fast as 78 kilometers an hour going up 100th Street. Wow. That's a problem, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so we, heard from, we heard from seniors that were, were scared to walk on the sidewalk. We heard from moms that were, were scared to push their babies and their strollers. Oh, wow. The sidewalks are two to three times wider. They're safer. There's more parking that's along there. You know, lately we've heard back from some folks on, on accessible parking and, you know, in some of the different handicap parking, we look at that, you know, mm. this is not something that it's, it's not a one and done. We can continue to grow on this, the lighting, the trees, the benches, mm-hmm. you know, it, I think people need to look at it as if they haven't lived in Fort John their whole life, because that's what I did. Hey, I, I stepped back and I went, okay, you know what? If I was just moving to this community, if I was just new to this community and I was going downtown or going to home. <laughs> no, I was just pointing at me. I'm oh, not in the community. Yeah, I was it wasn't there. <laughs> um, but you know, it's the same thing. So, you know, it was funny. I wish we would have done lights down the entire thing. The, the lights that overhang. The, so, the string lights? Man. I love those so, so much. So last year we finished off that phase and, and people are raving about oh, it. Oh, at and, night, they, it's a beautiful oh, it's drive. Beautiful. Just going right there. First thing in the morning is beautiful. But, you know, we sat back at council and, and, I, I, and I don't remember who it was. And I looked at them and I'm like, why didn't we do those down the entire stretch? Because I think people would have actually been happy with this change. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, but it's not, it's, it's about the different sections. It's about mm. the recreation core. It's about the downtown core. It's about the plaza core. So. Once we finish up 105th and get into Veterans Way, um, you know, I, I think that I think people's biggest complaints were always that it was it was one phase from being done, right? It was where do you merge, where do you park, and especially in the winter, once you're used to it, it flows, you know. And and let's let's get this done. You know, this hasn't cost taxpayers any money for the capital because this was all money saved out of the PRA, same as the the RCMP, yeah, yeah. same as the Festival Plaza. Mm-hmm. Everything we've done in that in that downtown has been done on on saved funds and on grants. Which, which should be recognized, I think, you know, by the community as a whole that, that they didn't pay for that. But it's going to be good. It's going to be nice. And, and let's just get it done and go into the following summer with a completed project. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, like I said, I came in when it started uh, the, f- the first section. I got the, the frustration for yeah, sure because totally. who loves construction, especially yeah. when you're trying to do your stuff during the day, work, whatever the case may be. But, I mean, in the past, like, year, like, I drive – up a hundredth every single day yeah. for the past couple of years. And I haven't had any issues. And that's just me personally. Like, I do think that I, I understand it now for sure, for sure. And but... there's still some frustration. You know, you're going to get frustrated because people are in the wrong lane. Oh, not, yeah. They're not turning across. You know what? It, yeah. just, Especially with the snow out, right? Give them an opportunity. Just, yeah. You know what? Slow it down. Mm-hmm. You're not in a great big hurry. Mm-hmm. Be a little bit kinder uh, and, and let them take their left-hand turn and, and go about your day. Uh, so as we wind down here, Trevor, um, one other thing I wanted to bring up aside from the budget, uh, it was a hefty one. Again, if you're looking for more information, head to the city's website. Um, you can check out the agenda for the re- most recent council meeting where David Joy um, said, made his presentation. The presentation's in there. There's a lot of information. And I believe the city also creates like a, a what you need to know. Oh, yeah. At least they did last year. Yeah. Well, so, even on our website, check you'll be able to, within, a, you know, within the month or so, you'll be yeah. able to go on there, put in your yeah. house value. It'll tell you what your taxes yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Right? So there's a lot of resources on the city's website. Make sure you check it out. But the old RCMP building. So it's been a question since the new one opened up um, what the use of the old RCMP building is. And I did see in the most uh, recent council that the city is currently applying for emergency operations center and emergency social services funding uh, through the UM, UBCM's emergency preparedness fund. Uh, one of the uses for the funding is to turn the old RCMP building into a turnkey uh, EOC. Um, I guess your thoughts on this and uh, why is this possibly a positive move from the Pomeroy where I believe the the services were before that? You know what? It's, well, uh, still are technically. Still are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it would give it a home, right? Mm-hmm. So for us, we look at that. We look at the old RCMP building. The old, old RCMP building is actually younger than I am. 
Um, right. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say how old I am, but it's, it's, it's a few years younger than I am. It's a good building, right? We, we, we outgrew that RCM as an RCMP building. We outgrew that building a decade and a half ago, mm. right? There's nothing wrong with the building. Yes. It needs to be upgraded. Yes. It needs some service upgrades and electrical upgrades and HVAC upgrades, but that's any building that that's that age. So, you know what? I mean, as with any building we look at the, the city used to always be in a get rid of it sort of mentality. Um, all municipalities did, right? Was, was we don't want it to tear it down. And, and we, have, we have seen where buildings got so bad that they had to be torn down. You know what? That building is a huge asset for our community. You know, whether it be for this purpose or, mm. or 10 years down the road be for something different. Um, you know, we need to get in, into that mentality of, of well-maintaining our assets, uh, growing our assets, ensuring that, that people's investment in our community grows. And, and when I say people's investment in our community, it's, you as a taxpayer, when you're paying your taxes, that's an investment into your community. Mm -hmm. You want to know that, that, that these buildings aren't being torn down or, or being, you know, just, just boarded up and left, um, that, that they're being renewed, they're being refreshed, and, and that they're, there's a purpose behind them. And I think that that's what you're going to see with this building, and, and it's going to be a great location for that. Mm -hmm. it, it allows us to have, you know, the other services in the Palmore Sports Center that we should have and the services in the arena that we should have. Um, and, and, and honestly, I think that, that it's going to be a benefit to the community all around and the region as well. At the very least, it spreads things out, right? Absolutely. You're not stuffing everything at the Pomeroy. Now you have, you know, uh, an uh, own space for the EOC. Um, of what you can speak of, is there any possible other uses for the building uh, that you guys have, have talked about? I know a lot of things have been kind of thrown out, but... Is there anything else that you guys are kind of leading towards? It's a, it's a big building. Yeah. There is a, a large basement for those that haven't been in it that is underneath it that's going to need a, a substantial reno. Um, I think right now it will be, it will be based on the, the EOC, um, which too, I mean, be, we could also then, you know, look at using that as, as a, an ESS center underneath that EOC, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's not just a one use, but we, we've gotten into this thing where the Pomeroy, the Pomeroy Sports Center is, is a large building, is a, it is a fantastic building in this community. But it's got to stop being the catch-all, right? At some point in time, we need to say, you know, that that is designed for sport. It is sport tourism. It is playing sports. It is teams. Um, it is it is not a catch-all be-all. Uh, you know, at one point in time, we had community services that were in there, and it's like, you know, so so let's focus on let's focus on the fact that that, that is sport and and our arts are our arts, and you know, our our EOC needs to be an EOC, and and we're fortunate to have again the RCMP building was was built through savings. It was built through grants. It was built through a mortgage that the province will pay. So the capital spending on that $51 million, there was not a cent that came from residential taxpayers in the city of Fort St. John. So when you look at that and then you go, okay, you know what? Now we've got a, a use of a, of a fantastic previous building that was built in 1983 or 84. Um, let's keep going. Let's mm -hmm. keep building. Uh, let's keep saving and let's keep investing in our city. Yeah, I saw that and I thought that that was a, a, a great idea to, to put the EOC in there for sure, especially coming off of, uh, you know, the wildfire season this last oh, yeah. year and, you know, a pretty warm winter. So let's right. see what, I don't want to jinx anything, but for this wildfire season coming up, uh, the newsroom at Energetic yeah. City is definitely uh, holding our breaths. Um, well, you know, th that's pretty much all the questions I have, Bo. I mean, I do have some more for council, but we only have, uh, you know, a certain amount of time. I guess I wanted to kind of open up the floor to you if there's anything else that you wanted to bring up to residents or um, you know, and inform them about anything else that the city has going on in uh, you know, the coming I, months. I think, I think, I mean, A, I think this is fantastic. I mean, this is our, like we said, this is our second mm. issue. Uh, little, the mayor was on the first one, Mayor Hanson. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to see these continue. I think mm. it's a good chance for people to have that conversation and, and understand kind of more than what's in a report, mm. um, you know, when, it, when it's coming from, from one of the councillors. Stay involved. Mm. You know, like you said, go to the city page. You can see all the information in David's report on there. Uh, from that, we're going to have public meetings. We're going to have public, you know, public hearings about the budgets. It, it's not, as we've said a few times of this, it's not a one and done, no. right? We, we want the feedback. You know, if, if the, you know, some of the, the funds maybe we're putting towards something, we know it's going to be a, a $6 a month increase, but if those funds should go to something else and, and we keep that increase, we want to hear about it, mm -hmm. right? We want to hear, is there, is there an issue that's in your neighborhood that we need to plan in our capital budget for next year, right? Because it's your kid's safety or because, you know, you, you can't get a stroller down the street. Council in, in Fort St. John, the mayor and council in Fort St. John, um, it, it is probably one of the most open uh, group that I've ever seen in my life. And, and I deal in a lot of different municipalities um, and have businesses in, in, in other municipalities. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's a different concept that we have here where, you know, we love hearing from people. We, we are involved on community pages. So when the, there's an issue that, you know, we can be tagged in or somebody can bring it to us. Mm -hmm. um, that is what we do. That is what we're going to continue to do. 
Uh, this is part of that. So, so thank you to you guys for ensuring that, that we could be open and transparent with the, with the residents that we were elected to serve. No, thank you so much for saying those kind words. Uh, I think this is going to be huge uh, for the community, like you're saying. And, uh, you know, watching councils all the time and reading the reports, like, don't get me wrong. I, even sometimes I'm scratching my head sitting there trying to figure it out. So this is an opportunity to then, you know, deliver it in a way that people could understand it or, you know, another way that they can possibly understand yeah, it. So, and get involved in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Well, thank you so much, uh, Councillor Trevor Boland for joining us for the second episode of Council Corner, which is taking place twice a month. Uh, we will be meeting with a member of council such as Bolin, uh, chatting about ongoing topics and uh, the most recent council meeting. So thank you so much for watching the second episode. Have a great day.